Item number SCP-7447, Security Level 3. Containment Class, Keter. Disruption Class, Eki. Risk Class, Danger. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-7447 is to be on suicide watch 24-7. Update. Through observation of the anomaly's behavior and its reaction to certain tests, it is not possible to kill SCP-7447 or cause permanent damage to the subject. An on-site rapid reconstruction team should be ready to be activated in case of a destructive SCP-4747 event for short notice be contained. The present containment procedures are currently not a feasible or cost-effective way to contain SCP-7447. SCP-7447 is currently contained of its own volition due to the unpredictability of the anomaly circumstances at any given moment. Containment should instead focus on persuading SCP-7447 to remain in containment as this appears to be the most effective method of containment thus far. Description SCP-7447 is a 36-year-old man of average build named Raymond McConnell. He displays no anomalous properties himself, rather surrounding SCP-7447 is what researchers dub a probability inversion and fluctuation field, in which events that are normally unlikely to occur become likely to occur within the field. These events are either extremely destructive to the environment around or to SCP-7447 himself, or extremely beneficial to SCP-7447 in various ways. It is noted that a beneficial event will always precede a destructive event with the degree of benefit normally corresponding to the degree of destruction and vice versa. While SCP-7447 may be harmed during these events, the damage is never fatal, even in the most extreme events. To this day, he has never failed to make a full recovery from all injuries sustained through non-anomalous means. Addendum 7447-1 Discovery SCP-7447 was brought to the Foundation's attention when Locos and Beep Tennessee reported a man who had won the lottery three times in two months, after which he was then placed on the potential reality bender watch list. He was placed into Foundation custody, see Addendum 7447-2, after which he was observed to slip on a banana peel, causing him to fall next to a $100 bill, after which the bill was struck by lightning while leaving SCP-7447 unharmed. Amnestics were deemed unnecessary due to the nature of the event and a lack of harm to nearby civilians. Addendum 7447-2 Interview Log Date 17th of May 2021 Interviewer Dr. Edward Poe Subject SCP-7447 Good morning Mr. McConnell. How are you doing this morning? I bet the incident earlier probably give you a scare, so I got us some coffee to make you feel more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So, it seems you're not too bothered by almost getting struck by lightning today. Yeah, it tends to happen. Interesting, interesting. Has this been happening for a while now? Could you pinpoint when exactly all of these extreme circumstances started occurring? <sighs> February 13th. Hmm, that's quite specific. Do you happen to know how you develop your current condition? Did anything unusual happen around that time? I had sex with Lady Luck. Excuse me? We've been together for around a year before that point, and she was the sweetest lady. No, the sweetest person I've ever met. Okay, were you aware of that? Do you know what I am? Dr. Poe appears distressed. Dr. Poe gestures toward the security guards. I'm not really sure what you're referring to, no. I'm past my thirties. The only thing further behind me than the American dream is my goddamn hairline. And she still saw something in me, and at that moment, we met in the bar. 
he just started talking, and, oh my lord, I was on cloud nine, son. I really thought I would never find love again, but holy cow, and ever I was with her, and, and I don't know how to say it. SCP-7447 puts his hand on his forehead and looks down at the table. I see. Dr. Poe adjusts towards the security guards again. Did she reveal to her true nature at some point? I guess so, but it ain't matter to me. We've been together until that day we made love and she just disappeared. I tried looking for her, but now I'm scared to go walk down the street. I could leave my house and an Enfield falls and breaks my foot. It's horrible. I've tried to kill myself, but it never works. The rubble snap, the shotgun shell happens to be broke, or the building I tried to jump off of is beside the goddamn bouncy castle. Oh my, I'm sorry for all this, I really am. It's just... <sighs> kind of crushes your soul to second guess everything you do. <clears throat> I see how that would trouble you, but we digress. Do you have any control over the phenomena you experience in any way? Um, not really, but maybe a little bit. Let me try something. SCP-7447 takes the two cups of coffee and pours them onto the table. The liquid in Dr. Poe's cup melts through the table. Security footage showed assisting Gavis accessing SCP-294 where he entered Acid that looks and smells like coffee. Ada investigation found that he was an undercover member of the Chaos Insurgency. While the liquid in SCP-7447's cup spills out as normal, this was found to be high-quality cold brew coffee taken from Dr. Adam's flask. I should not need to remind my fellow researchers that it is rude to take homemade food from another researcher without asking. Dr. Adams. Dr. Poe jumps away from the table in shock. Jesus! Yeah, this happens often. SCP-7447 is moved to a different room where the interview continues. Apologies for the interruption. How about this? The organization I'm a part of specializes in studying phenomena such as the one you are experiencing. I believe we can't help each other if you stay with us. Hmm, I guess that's okay, Doc. Excellent. That concludes our interview, and I'll be seeing you very soon. And now, Researcher's notes. The subject seems to be less concerned about his well-being, and more so with finding this Lady Luck character, hereby referred to as POI 8338. Whether this is due to his go outweighing his fear in this circumstance, or if he knows he won't be killed for some reason is unknown. His nonchalant attitude to life-threatening near-miss scenarios suggests the latter. That being said, given SCP-7447's mental state, I recommend psychological counseling for him before he does anything to endanger the site or the personnel. Addendum 7447-3 Test Log Test Event While some results listed were a result of intentional tests, Others are offense that occurred outside of testing, which was noted down to show examples of SCP-7447's anomalous properties. SCP-7447 rolls two 20-sided dice. Result, the first dice rolled 1, while the other dice rolled 21. Note, the second die was not ordered by any means and was later found to have a misprint where the twelfth side was printed backward. Routine full body scan. SCP-7447 are shown to have multiple tumors in different stages of cancer development and metastasis. However, SCP-7447's blood was shown to have multiple rare viruses which have the specific envelope protein such that it only infects the cancer cells. The subject's body is in perfect equilibrium as new cancer growths are appearing as quickly as the viruses destroy them. 
the tumors also seem to be destroyed before they can cause significant damage to SCP-7447's body. SCP-7447 will start at a standard dartboard from a distance of 2.37 meters, blindfolded. The first dart lands on the center of the target. The second dart strikes the concrete wall. Unbeknownst to the researchers or the subject, a gas leak occurred in the testing chamber. The metal dart striking the concrete wall created a spark that caused a small explosion, setting SCP-7447's clothes on fire. The sprinkler system was activated to put out the fire, but removed the subject's clothes, which had disintegrated. SCP-7447 only suffered minor first-degree burns. SCP-7447 attempts to wash his hands. A small Australian box jellyfish drops through the faucet and onto SCP-7447's hand, stinging him. While there was no medication or antivenom immediately available to treat the sting, an instance of SCP beep was held in a neighboring containment cell. SCP beep's fecal matter was shown to remove the effects of a box jellyfish sting if consumed. The actions done by the researchers and guards during this incident are undergoing ethics committee review. SCP-3447 plays a 20-turn game of Mario Party Superstars for the Nintendo Switch with three other D-Class personnel. Redacted. An unacceptable loss of life, foundation resources, and a severe underestimation of the subject's capabilities. SCP-7447 abstaining from food for one week. This was a presumed suicide attempt where SCP-7447 had been disposing of his food in the toilet without the guards knowing. A trolley of ingredients from the cafeteria crashes through the observation window. The ingredients then mix together midair and land on a table creating Fettuccine Alfredo by pure chance. SCP-7447 hesitates and appears distressed before taking a bite, exclaiming, Frick, it's delicious! Before punching the wall, crying and eating through half of the food on the plate before collapsing due to an epileptic shock as the dish contained peanuts. SCP-7447 is currently in a coma due to the allergic reaction. I sent a sample of the dish to caretaker Tim Hine, and we both agree it tasted amazing. Look forward to lunch at the site cafeteria on Thursday. While the subject is unconscious, the anomalous effects are still very much active as staff have been slipping on banana peels and finding valuable items while performing routine checkups on SCP-7447. This could be studied further. Addendum. 7447-4. Project Proposal. Lax Me Engine Project. Initial Project Proposal. Dr. Adam Knighton. Project Lead. Apply Quantum Physics in Engineering. Excerpt from the Project Proposal document sent to the O5 Council. Lax Me Engine Project. While the current circumstances of SCP-7447 are unfortunate, it presents an opportunity for deeper studies into the anomaly. Within any situation, the subject is able to manipulate probability and outcome of his surroundings. My assistant Leeds and I had made great strides into theorizing how we would refine SCP-7447's anomalous property to create consistent and useful results. Imagine the improvement it could have on mechanical maintenance, mobile task force operations, or just everyday mundane activities to make the foundation run smoother. The potential of this project cannot be understated, and I do hope you accept our proposal. Result, with a vote of 9 to 2 to 2 in favor, the project was granted funding as per O5 Council approval. Purpose, use SCP-7447's comatose body as a medium for his anomalous property to be controlled, thus allowing for highly controlled and beneficial probability manipulation via the Laxmi engine. Abstract. Consider a system within the larger 
macroscopic experience in any given system described by a set of configuration variables. Typically, the action of an individual within said system is an integral of a system Lagrangian. The presence of SCP-7447 alters the quantum state of multiple variables within its probability inversion and fluctuation field, which results in two logically extreme outcomes. The Laxby engine reduces the variables in the controlled system to near zero. Placing SCP-7447 within such a system allows for controlled manipulation of the quantum state of any object or personnel completing an action within the specified chambers. While we may not be able to complete control cause in effect, it should result in some type of desirable outcome. Description the Laxby engine is a foundation designed outcome assurance device designed to guarantee the best possible result of certain experiments, operations, or missions. The device consists of three interconnected main components, which are Laxin 1. Main holding chamber, Laxin 1, is a localized near zero variance environment in which SCP 7447 is held. To support SCP-7447 advanced life support systems are present within XN1. The chamber is lined with modified hypersensitive Akiva volatilic panels to absorb all discharge anomalous radiation emitting from SCP-7447 when it's powered on. This radiation is filtered and fed into XN3. XN2 Quantum Spectrograph Lexon 2 is located between Lexon 1 and Lexon 3, consists of converging conduits from Lexon 1 leading into the quantum spectrograph. By acting as a filter, only the radiation that results in a beneficial outcome is fed into Lexon 3. The unwanted radiation is fed out of the site via ventilation. Lexon 3, output chamber. After the desired radiation is fed from Lexin 2, it is fed into Lexin 3, where actions can be taken with an altered quantum state. The chamber is similarly a near zero variance environment and is lined with a Kiva elective panels, which serve multiple purposes to retain all radiation within Lexin 3, prevent leakage, and allow the radiation only to affect the action taking place within the chamber and not the chamber itself. End addendum. Addendum 7447-5, activation log. Attempt one, result, failure to activate. Reason, power failure. Notes, 20 seconds before the activation, a site-wide electrical outage occurred due to a short circuit within the Site-44 West Wing Breaker. The backup generators were activated, However, the insufficient power prevented the test from proceeding. Activation was attempted again following restoration of all power to the site. Attempt 2. Result. Failure to activate. Reason. Destruction of crucial mechanisms. Notes. During a routine check prior to activation, technician Mark Baker slipped on a banana peel, causing him to pull multiple wires during his fall. This caused multiple power cables and interface mechanisms to be damaged, preventing activation. Activation was attempted again following repairs. Attempt 3. Result. Failure to activate. Reason. Severe water damage to multiple crucial mechanisms. Notes. Prior to activation, a rainstorm occurred around Site 44. The change in biometric pressure and humidity along with the architecture of the room caused the perfect conditions within the testing chamber to form an indoor rain cloud. The sudden introduction of water damaged numerous systems and caused multiple short circuits, necessitating immediate repairs. Activation was attempted again following repairs. Attempt 4. Result. Failure to activate. Reason. Circuitry failure caused by excessive radiation. Note. Before activation, high levels of Akiva radiation was detected within Lexon 1. 
This resulted in the overloading of the radio sensitive panels and circuitry within the device. It is noted that unusual brain activity was observed in SCP-7447 before the equipment shut down. This includes a spike in delta brain waves, occipital temporal waves, and increased activity in the frontal lobe, indicating heightened stress levels and dreaming. Refer to Addendum 7447-6 for elaboration and investigation into this event. Post-investigation, repairs are completed and activation attempts continued as normal. Four activations omitted. Refer to Addendum 7447-7 for latest activation slash incident 7447-B. End Addendum. Addendum 7447-6, Incident 7447-A. Audio Visual Transcript 7447-1. Forward. The following is a transcript of SCP 7447's brainwaves interpreted in an audio visual format. This was achieved through anomalous technology, which allows for the analysis and recreation of neural stimuli via mapping of residual brain activity. Begin transcript. Environment appears to be a two room apartment, later confirmed to be based on SCP 7447's residence. The audio and video background seems to be slightly distorted. However, this is due to the experimental nature of the anomalous technology or due to the issues with SCP-7447's memory is unknown. The video is from the first person perspective of SCP-7447 who is sitting at a table across from a woman with blonde hair, presumed to be POI-8338. The two appear to be eating a meal while talking. However, due to the audio interference, the conversation cannot be heard. POI-8338 appears pleased with the discussion as she periodically laughs throughout the conversation. From the hand gestures and the implied laughter through the video shaking, it is inferred that SCP-7447 is also in a pleasant mood as well. SCP-7447 rubs his temples and video pans around the apartment living room. While the room is generally distorted, certain fixtures such as the pictures hung on the wall, the couch, the ceiling fan, and a small electrical socket are able to be clearly seen. SCP-7447 begins to point at the distortion and point at the clear objects within his vision. Mid-conversation, SCP-7447 looks down at his plate for the first time since the video began. Fujicini Alfredo is observed. SCP-7447 gets up from his chair suddenly. POI-8338 appears behind him. Short pause. SCP-7447 grabs her hands and the video begins to blur and liquid drips from the video perspective. POI 8338's grip tightens, but she retracts her hands shortly after. SCP 7447 appears surprised and looks up at her face. Her face is. Mimetic hazard reducted. Simultaneously, SCP 7447's comatose body experiences a hypnic jerk. The video feed becomes distorted and is black for several seconds. The setting changes to SCP-7447's bedroom, where he is lying in bed. He then sits up suddenly, appearing distressed. He looks to his left, and the same blonde woman is laying down next to him. He breathes heavily and looks down at his hands. SCP-7447 turns to POI-8338, who is asleep and facing away. SCP-7447 shifts her body to look at her face. As she turns around, the video again begins to distort. Truly, it is beep. SCP-7447 falls through the floor. He continues to fall for several minutes. SCP-7447 lands on the street and appears unharmed. The video feed pans around the street where the environment is distorted in certain areas, but clear in others. The street itself and the people walking past them are able to be seen clearly. However, the faces of said individuals and cars appear out of focus. 
SCP-7447 attempts to run back to his apartment, but trips and the video feed is shown to fall onto a pointed metal fence. SCP-7447 falls through the floor before his eye can collide with the fence. SCP-7447 lands on the same street and appears unharmed. He struggles to stand and looks around. SCP-7447 proceeds to walk slowly down the street for 44 seconds before looking upwards, where construction workers are fixing something on the third floor of a building. The construction workers accidentally drop an anvil onto SCP-7447, and he attempts to avoid it, but he is unsuccessful. SCP-7447 falls through the floor. SCP-7447 lands on the same street and appears unharmed. He looks at his surrounding again, noticing the same environment. After several minutes, he sits down on the side of the curb and observes the cars before looking down at the road. A loud crashing sound is heard off screen, and SCP-7447 looks up at the source of the noise. A large truck had a burst tire on the road, causing it to ram into a nearby traffic light. The force of the crash caused the front left wheel of the truck to come loose and fly directly towards SCP-7447. SCP-7447 makes no attempt to avoid the incoming object. He is hit and falls backward. SCP-7447 falls through the floor. SCP-7447 lands into black abyss and appears unharmed. POI-8338 appears in front of him with her back facing him. SCP-7447 attempts to reach his hand towards POI-8338, but she disappears. She reappears seconds later as a colossal entity that the video feed is unable to display properly or judge its true size. Her face once again beep. Hawk and heed my words. SCP-7447 attempts to step backwards. Why do you pursue me, mortal? The audio is now perfectly clear and a voice reverberates. SCP-7447 falls over and attempts to crawl backwards and turn away from its face. He is heard hyperventilating. Leave me and never seek my presence again. SCP-7447 clutches his head and looks away from its face. He screams in pain. Please. SCP-7447 stiffens and slowly looks back at her. She weeps. He pauses for several seconds. He gets up and reaches out to her. SCP-7447 slips on a banana peel, and the audiovisual display ends. End transcript. Afterward, following this incident, SCP-7447's brain activity returned to the expected activity of a comatose patient. It is noted that SCP-7447 events have been occurring in higher severity after this event as power outages, unforeseen breakage of equipment, and containment breaches have been increased by as high as 24%. The project was said to continue as it was theorized that the increased strength of the probability inversion and fluctuation field would increase the effectiveness of the Luxme engine. Starting the engine would also hopefully contain SCP-7447 effects to the localized area of LexN1, where the rest of the site would not be affected. Addendum 7447-7, Incident 7447-B, Audiovisual Transcript 7447-2, Location, Luxme Engine Control Room, Personnel Present, Dr. Adam O. Knighton, Safety Inspector Saxon T. Coleman. Forward. After the previous seven failed attempts, the research and technical staff in charge of the Luxme engine attempted to activate the device again. Following activation attempt seven, it was mandated by the site director to have a safety inspector present at all times to prevent accidents. The transcript follows security footage of a discussion in the control room. Begin transcript. This is Dr. Knighton recording activation attempt number, uh, nine. Timing in three, two, one. Machine is primed, but it does not activate. Frick! 
Why is this so hard to do? You would think we'd be able to at least turn the damn thing on before we run into problems, but no! <sighs> Jeez, calm down. We'll just flip the on switch again. I know. I just signed that switch. Right. Uh, whatever you say, man. You're not the one who had to travel to another continent because of some computer glitch. Due to an unforeseen error, Safety Inspector Cummins from Site 133 in Europe was called instead of a Safety Inspector from Site 33, which is the closest neighboring site to Site 44. Yeah, I really don't see why you're here either. Excuse me? Right. No, no. That's the I meant. I. Sure. <sighs> Never mind. I'm just hoping it's not what I think it is. What? Well, considering SCP-7447 anomalous properties in relation to our current quantum state, we might be deadlocked without being able to proceed with our current task, and also considering we can't actually power up our Akiva Volatolic panels, I have a theory that... Yeah, saying that again in English would be nice. What? Huh? Do you not read the briefing papers I passed to the staff? Well, first of all, I'm not technically your staff. And also, my car decided to break down while parked on site, so I was busy getting it fixed. I should also mention that sleeping here is hell, because in my first night here, there were two false fire alarms, so I didn't have much time to sleep. Leap, let alone read. Well, earlier today, I saw you reading through notes. Do you get anything? I tried, and most of it is unreadable. What? How is that possible when it's not handwritten? Uh, how do I say it? Every time I try to read it, it's like descending through a concentric spiral where each try gets more unrewarding and more boring while I reach the end. I just got lost in all jargon and I gotta keep flipping through back and forth from the index page at the back until my thumb was numb. The jargon is crucial for the paper and for understanding what you're actually freaking dealing with. Oh, and another thing, where did this weird dream technology come from? It would take like two sentences to explain this groundbreaking technology that can see someone's past thoughts like a movie? What's next? A machine that translates dead people's memories into written pose? Well, I don't have to explain and break down every bit of technology to you that's relevant, do I? So now I'm not being verbose enough? Uh, whatever. Maybe if this was some kind of sci-fi anime bullcrap, some nerd would get a kick out of this. But for all that I care, I just got to be here to make sure no one trips on another wire. I, uh, well, if you can function just fine without reading all, then I don't see a reason why you're still complaining. I'm complaining because it's hard to read and apparently I'm too dumb to get it. If that's what you think, then whatever. If you really want to ignore, then be my guest. I'm not your freaking mom. It's not like some sci-fi anime wolf crap is going to be the death of the foundation. Dr. Nighton throws his hands into the air in frustration. Without looking, he accidentally hit Inspector Cummin, who was standing up. Motherfuck! Inspector Cummin snaps Dr. Nighton on the head. Dr. Nighton gets up and attempts to fight back. As both are innate fighters, no urgent medical attention was required. Absolute crap at you! We close from being punched in the stomach. Fighting continues for two more minutes. Screw you! Uh, have you all tried turning the thing off and on again? Oh my god, can you shut up? I'm trying to! Wait, what? Dr. Nine and Inspector Cummins stop fighting. Several seconds of silence. Dr. Nine and Inspector Cummins glance at one another. Dr. Nine and Inspector Cummins both turn to face SCP-7447, who is conscious and mobile. End transcript. Afterward, 
Both Doctor and I'm Inspector Coleman were then taken to disciplinary review. Wow! SCP-7447 was taken for questioning. It is noted that, along with his safety report, Inspector Coleman attached a 2,000-word analysis of Dr. Nine's present no character. This document was reserved for the aforementioned disciplinary review. End addendum. Addendum 7448. Interview Log 2. Date, 20th of September, 2021. Interviewer, Dr. Everett Poe. Subject, SCP-7447. Forward, two days after incident, 7447A, SCP-7447 was taken for questioning. It is noted that SCP-7447 was previously in a comatose state for 12 days. Despite this, the subject was fully recovered after two days of rest and proper nutrition. Dr. Poe was chosen for this interview as he had conducted the initial recovery interview and served as the subject's therapist for an extended period of time. Begin log. Hello, Raymond. How are we feeling? Hey, Doc. I'm alright. At least I think so. You know, it is quite miraculous that you recovered from that coma, right? I guess it was pretty lucky. <laughs> it's great to see you choking more. It's a sign of your personal progress. I guess it is. You know the talks we've been having have been real nice. All of them tests have been distracting me and letting me think about what's been happening. You know, Doc, I had a weird dream a while ago. Really? Do share your experience. I think it gives good feedback into what you're thinking. Dr. Poe has already been briefed on incident 7447A. Well, it's kind of strange. Okay, well, I saw her and she was there, but it wasn't really her or it was. I really got no clue. At least I got to see her again. That was good. I think I start getting killed, but then I see her again and she tells me to go. You sound a bit hazy on the details, but that's normal for dreams. I recall seeing her a little sad, but I felt a real sad too. I'm sorry to hear that, Raymond. Hey, Doc. I still miss her. That's completely normal. Before my role in the Foundation, I had a short stint in a regular therapy clinic. I met a lot of post force patients during my time there. Messy relationships tend to leave a lot of baggage for a lot of people. You think it wasn't meant to be? Well, I didn't say that. In fact, from your stories, it seems the relationship was going pretty well. Huh. Yeah, I suppose so. You know, I've been thinking about why she left, and I'm not sure how I can get an answer and I don't really know what I'm doing here. I suppose so too. Anyways, I should get on to the questions and not take up too much of her day. Do you think she's still out there, Doc? Hmm? Oh, most likely. If she truly is Lady Luck, then those kinds of deities live very long, and considering your unique anomalies, I suspect she's a deity of some kind. So, she's really out there. Probably. Anyways, I have some questions for... Doc? Yes, Freeman? Is it me? The reason she left? Do you think it's me? Of course not. From our conversations, you seem like a pleasant person to be around. And from the way you talk about P.O.I., I mean, how you talk about her, tells me that you really do love her. There is really no way of knowing why, save for asking her yourself. Ask her myself. Can I share for a while, Raymond? Mm. Oh yeah, go ahead. Before uni, I really like thinking about how people would think and helping people out with their issues and making them feel better just really appealed to me. But in my second semester, I was really in a terrible mindset and I almost quit part way. 
After that, I thought about the passion I had before I got into all of the nitty gritty of studying and remembered what I love to do, and just pushed forward. Huh, that's an interesting story, Doc. The point I'm trying to make is that we here at the Foundation can help you, if we just keep on the track we laid out. Well, once again, I digress. I have a few more questions to ask you. SCP-7447 stands up and begins shaking Dr. Poe's hands. Thank you so much, Doc. I mean it. I, uh, no worries. Uh, may I ask what this is about? I'm going to find her. Pardon? The only way I'm going to know for sure is if I go find her and ask. Right, okay, um, okay, Raven. I need you to calm down and think about this. Oh, don't worry, I had a lot of time to think during all the tests and talks, Doc. It's like you said, I gotta remember what I love and push forward. No, that's not what I mean, or the point of the story. <laughs> uh, how do you even know how to get out of the sight? Multiple small meteorites suddenly collide with the site at that moment, causing multiple containment breaches and the destruction of the wall of the interrogation room. I guess that's my cue to leave, Doc. Might see you again. Who knows? Here I come, Lucy! SCP-7447 turns to leave through the destroyed wall. Raymond, wait! Dr. Poe slips on a banana peel. SCP-7447 walks out to sight. As security personnel were occupied handling the other containment breaches, he was able to exit the site without issue. SCP-7447 looks at the sunset. Hot damn! Now wasn't this a random day? And all.